our primary interest is in the evolutionary history of plants, how plant form came about, how, how plants actually develop, and how they structure themselves. And then, of course, we're quite interested in knowing how plants actually in, interacted with each other and with other aspects of their ancient environment, because that's what plants are. We, plants are fundamental to understanding ecosystems today, and they're certainly fundamental to understanding them in the past. In the 1880s, uh, or thereabouts, uh, a, um, a flood, and it, at the time they referred to it as a freshet, occurred in the Schoharie Valley. And um, the result of that was uh, the, un the discovery of um, these large tree trunks. And the group are called Cladoxylopsids. And the genus is Eospermatopterus. Terrible names, but um, that's what you have to <laughs> work with. And then in 2010, uh, as a res result of reconstruction of the Schoharie Dam, uh, they reopened this, the original Riverside Quarry site. And much to our amazement, uh, the entire quarry floor was still intact. The, the ancient paleosol, the ancient fossil soil, was still intact, showing where all the trees originally were, were located on this, in this ancient environment. What we found was a mixed assemblage of, uh, of trees, of th at least three different types, that uh, that represent considerably greater complexity than anybody had ever suspected were, were there. It's, it's helpful to, to have an idea how to interpret a site like that, to look at modern plant forms. All of the, the actual systematics, the actual relationships may not be that close. Uh, plants have not changed a lot in terms of their basic body shape and forms. The forms we see today uh, really do help inform us in ter terms of what's possible in, in interpreting the fossils. This is one of the Eospermatopterus stumps that we recovered from the uh, quarry site in 2010. The tree was hollow, the sand fills in, and um, so what you're getting is a, a view of what the inside surfaces would have, would have looked like, although it's been inverted by the sand to look like it's a tree trunk. It's actually a cast of the inside of the tree. Uh, around the edges, you can see sites where the roots would come out, starting about here, all the way down and out all around, like, much like a modern uh, palm does today. You can see a very similar kind of pattern. This is a good example of what an Eospermatopterus at much larger scale probably looked like with its base covered by a, a skirt of these new roots, new roots forming all the time and actually forming additional parts of the mantle. Ferns are a modern representative of a very ancient group of uh, vascular plants, plants with vascular tissue. Uh, so they're probably as close as we can get to what a cladoxylopsid, a relative to a, a cladoxylopsid. Uh, tree ferns are very interesting because they also have the same basic body plan consisting of a main stem bearing fronds, which are what these were, ultimately up there, and continuing to make new ones uh, as, as it continues to grow in height much like we imagine the Cladoxylopsids to have done. When you look at the leaves, modern ferns have a frond consisting of leaflets. This is all one leaf. The ancient plants uh, just had branch systems that actually were the ancestors of these leaves. This modern vine, Monstera, is the, is the genus of it, is kind of how I imagine the Aenorphytalian plants at the Gilboa Quarry uh, looking uh, in life. They had a large tree-sized main rhizome or trunk, which you can see, uh, and, this, and the plants actually uh, wandered through the forest, as this one is now doing, uh, supporting itself on occasion by roots that it would make only here and there, attaching itself perhaps to uh, uh, associated trees with its roots. A very unusual kind of morphology for an early Devonian plant, no, nothing else is, is known like that. Uh, it's very helpful to see a, a, an example of a plant maybe uh, occupying the same kind of niche, kind of behaviors in an ancient forest. It helps us visualize, which is actually hard to understand otherwise. <laughs> the modern, modern application is of interest, and uh, we, you never know what you're going to learn. But uh, at, we're, we're dealing with plants that are impossibly old. 387 million years old. Um, what we're really interested in is understanding how they came about, how forests, uh, plants of large size, became structured as forests. We may learn a lot about modern forests, but our, our primary goal is just to understand what happened.